Welcome to the Franklin County NC Podcast. I'm James Hicks, and this is a podcast about Franklin County, North Carolina. On our broadcast, we hope you'll learn a few things that you didn't know about Franklin County, North Carolina, plus some helpful tips for you in your daily lives. I know we've been on a little bit of a hiatus for about the last month uh, through the the hot days of summer and in July. We're back uh, full steam with another uh, very interesting episode coming up. So today I am joined by Meg Wyatt, who is the 4-H Youth Development Agent at Franklin County Cooperative Extension. And we're going to talk a little bit about 4-H and what uh, all that is. So welcome to the podcast. Uh, Meg, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. So we're talking about uh, 4-H. Before we get into all that, uh, kind of give us your background on uh, where are you from, how you got in, kind of got here. So where are you from originally? I'm originally from right here in Franklin County. I started out at Meredith College and I finished with a bachelor degree and then I went to North Carolina State University and got my master's in agriculture extension and then I started my career as a 4-H agent. Um, I began in New Hanover County and I stayed there for a little while, moved to Greene County and then found my way back home to Franklin County and I've been a 4-H agent for 18 years. Oh wow, wow, that's, wow. So you've, well when we get into some of that I'm thinking 18 years so you've really seen some people uh, come through this program. So uh, what does the 4-H Youth Development Agent, uh, what, do, what do you do? I mean, for, for people who aren't familiar with maybe what that, um, that title would, would entail. Okay, so 4-H is a youth development program, which is actually the largest youth organization in the United States with over 7 million participants. Breaking it down just a little bit more, for North Carolina, there's 261,000 youth that participate yearly. And then break it down a little bit further. For Franklin County, we have about 2,200 youth that participate yearly, whether it's in 4-H clubs, special interest programs. We have volunteers that lead those clubs. We do school enrichment. We have sizzling summer sessions and other extra events that go out throughout the year. For our youth development, we are focusing a lot on life skills, focusing on leadership, community service, citizenship focus. Within the schools, we are hitting on those standardized course study objectives so that it's a hands-on program for youth to remember it more, not just reading it or seeing it. They're actually going to do it and learn it by doing, which is our 4-H motto. And you have... um I know from when I've been here, because I haven't been here that long, especially with the leadership element of it, um, getting to take uh, part in the Board of Commissioners meeting. So the first time my experience was last year with the um, NCACC 4-H representative, I think it was, and it was Lance Williams, and and getting sort of introduced with some of the things with with him um, and and. The, his success in in sort of leadership on even a statewide level coming from here in Franklin County, that was sort of a, an interesting thing of of trying to follow like what is 4-H, what do, what do they do, and and so um, uh, I know he was uh, pretty successful in this program and and goes on to bigger and better things. And I you probably have that from time to time, uh, but at least that was a big example. Of course, he was on the podcast uh, a couple of months ago when he shadowed our assistant county manager Will Durfer. Do you see a lot of that kind of, I mean, can you look back and say, okay, you can kind of see this leadership development. I mean, sometimes I know you you have a lot of people and, and, you know, you can kind of see it, but I mean, something as apparent as as like with Lance, do you see that often? I do. And that is something nice with being in this role. I've been in Franklin for 12 years. And so with that, I have gotten to see Lance grow from what we consider clover buds. Those are our ages five to seven. So he started out as a clover bud, and he has grown through the program all the way to age 18. And so he's one of my first kids that I got to see go all the way through our 4-H program and all the age categories. And so that's where we start. We start with our young kids, and we build them on the county level. We move them up into the district events, and then when they become – Teenagers, they get to do more on the state level and have more opportunities to grow that way in leadership positions. And I will say that I do get to see that, and it's fabulous, wonderful success stories. We do have a youth attending 
what they called the Youth Voice for the County Commissioner's Annual Conference, and her name is Meredith Potter, and she has gone and represented at the County Commissioner's already this year, so she'll be seeing them in August. But it is amazing to watch those kids grow and succeed, um, especially when they're very passionate about wanting to be in a leadership role. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I guess let's break this down for for the involvement. So, what is the sort of that minimum age of starting? In okay, 4-H? we start at age five. Okay, and we serve through age eighteen. Okay, so from five to would you say eight? Five to eight. Five, five to seven are five. our clever buds. Okay, okay, and then the next one is nine to eighteen. Okay, okay, and then you're in, and what are they called? Anything specific? No, no, just clover buds. Just four H's. Okay. okay, just four H's. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like pre pre four H and, and uh, yeah, that's so, right. And of club. course, the programs are divided up age appropriate. Yeah. So, curriculum that's being taught is not nine through eighteen. It may be nine to twelve. Yeah. Okay. So, so what is you mentioned some of the the different programming um, that you do in four H, but what what is some of that that um, people would See, uh, I mean, you're going through, I know you were in a, a camp, was it last week or the week before last or so, uh, during July. So what what do, you, what do you kind of do? What does some of the programming look like? Okay, so starting out as a, a yearly outlook mm-hmm. our, during our school year, which is August through May, traditional calendar, we do school enrichment. So we're offering teachers different school enrichment kits that they can do to align with their standard course of study. One that is very popular is our embryology program where we bring eggs and incubators into the classroom and they do a almost 28-day program with these. So they get to take care of the babies and then they get to see them hatch and then we get to take them back to the person that provided us with those eggs. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful relationship with someone local, a local farmer, and then we get to serve the kids in our Franklin County school system or the charter schools when they ask, in private schools, and homeschool youth as well. So we are open to anybody that's interested in school enrichment programs. Also, during the school year, we have special interest programs, which this past year we did a 4-H kid cootery class, and it was a four-week program where kids came in. We did different themed charcuterie boards. This year we are hoping to do a self-care program, and it will be six weeks, so it's one day a week. And then also during the school year, we have clubs, and sometimes those are special interest clubs. So we may have a community club that focuses on animals, and these are led by our wonderful volunteers that are screened and trained and just very passionate about what they teach and want to reach our youth in our county. Also, we have our Franklin County County Council program, which is our youth 6th through 12th grade, and that's when they're doing those extracurricular overnight things for teen, teens for teen retreat, doing going to Youth Voice. They get to go to State Council Conference. They get to go to North Carolina 4-H Congress, which is happening this weekend, and that's where they're doing more leadership workshops. They are getting to vote on their new youth representatives for the year. Um, we also have sizzling summer sessions during our summer months. So when our traditional calendar youth are out of school, we're doing sizzling summer sessions. And that could be anything from, do you want to show an animal how to bake things in the kitchen? We do maker space where kids are given a clue and they have to build things and see if it really works. We also have spa days where we are actually using our local businesses and our county partners to do things and provide things to the youth so they can see what our whole county has to offer. Okay. Yeah, and it seems like some of the uh, program from what I, I gather, it's not necessarily so curriculum bound. It's kind of a, you can kind of mold it and, and adjust it for the interests that people may be having. That's correct. And people do not have to belong to a club to be involved in 4-H. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm still getting over 2,200. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so you think I didn't about know it was all, that big. <laughs> so you think about all the kids that are in the classrooms. Yeah. If you're serving mm-hmm. 10, 20 classrooms with 25 kids each, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so which one is the thing? And I know I saw last year there was some competitions. Um, I know I because I, I have some pictures, I think, on my computer from, from some of the things from 
different things. I think there was like somebody had some canning, won some canning awards okay. and some some uh, some of the more agricultural side of it. So youth are able to submit their items to the state fair each okay. year. And so that's NC State Fair okay. entries, that type of thing. But they have a 4-H category. So all of our kids in North Carolina that are 4-Hers can participate in the 4-H state entries. Yeah. And then we also have youth that participate outside of the 4-H entries that might be cake decorating mm-hmm. or quilt making, which we've had several kids do that. And it's wonderful to see it on display, all their talents. Oh, yeah. And and thinking about, you know, 100 counties in North Carolina and to see the ones that are they're placing uh, with the, whatever the structure is and to see them bring home some awards and go, wow. I mean, you know, Franklin County is being well represented out there. Um, and, and they're, and they're getting to learn this stuff. I feel like you've kind of answered some of this, but how can people, oh, how can people, how can, um, kids get involved with 4-H and, and become a part of it? I mean, there's probably a couple different paths of doing it, but how do they, how do they get involved? First, they can reach out to me and then we can start them on a path if they're interested in joining a club in their local community, if there's one near them. That's great. We plug them in there. If that doesn't seem like a fit, we try something else, whether it's a special interest program that's not once a month meeting kind of thing. It might just be, like I suggested, the Kid Cootery or the upcoming self-care classes, um, which will involve physical fitness, um, taking care of your skin, nutrition, that type of thing. If that's not up their alley either, that's great. We can find something. There's always something called individual study. We have curriculum that parents can ask for, and the youth can kind of do it on their own. And if they need assistance or some curriculum kits to go with it, we can provide that. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like there's an opportunity for everyone to find some little spot of 4-H that they can really get something out of. So what are the what are some things that are on the horizon with 4-H to look down the road toward? Okay, so that new class, which is called a SPIN club, because it's a special interest club. It doesn't last year round. It'll be a... They're not just spinning around. That's correct. That's correct. (laughs) That's correct. Um, But the new SPIN club will be offered. We also are looking forward to a pumpkin contest, decorating contest. We have done that in the past couple of years. It's been covid so we've had just electronic entries, but hoping maybe this year it will be in person mm-hmm. where youth will get to bring their pumpkins and they'll be judges. And then we have our school enrichment, which will be starting back up. We also have a target shooting sports club that will be competing in August at the state um, competition and district competition. We also have this past, this upcoming weekend, Congress, where the kids will be competing on a state level, their presentation topics. So we will have six youth representing Franklin County on the state level at presentations Okay. this weekend. Okay. So lots lots and lots of things happening and going on. Uh, yeah, and I, and I can imagine COVID was probably a challenging time um, for trying to get some of it because most of this, this programming, if not almost all of it, is it's pretty hands-on. So having to do this, but coming, coming out of all of that, uh, I'm sure people are, are really, um, looking forward to, to getting back to some of these and, you know, looking back to with COVID with, with kids going through that. I mean, of course, when I grew up, we didn't go through that, but some of these kids, I mean, there's a chunk of their lives that was, you know, you know, shifted. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like making up for lost time sometimes and, and getting some of this stuff going. So, uh, so lots of things on the horizon for, for 4-H and the, and the different things that, uh, that you have going on there. I'll just, let me try to go back in and say, is there anybody, do we have some other notable 4-H alumni out there that, that, you know, might be recognizable? I do. I have several kids that have stepped, I I say kids, but they're not kids. They're young adults now, and they're grown-ups. Um, but I still have several that keep in contact, and they have gone on to become chefs, and that's what they wanted to do when they left 4-H. That's what they did their presentations on. That's what they strived for in college, and they have gone on. They have become chefs. I have 
very successful kids that wanted to be a doctor, and they're at Baylor, and they're doing their medical degree. I've had several go into our military in different branches, and they have succeeded. And it's just, it's great to look back and see how much, how successful they are. And then sometimes they come back and say, hey, Miss Meg, if 4-H hadn't allowed me to go to this opportunity, I might not have known about what I do now. And that's a that's a great feeling for 4-H, not just me personally as an agent, but for North Carolina 4-H to offer all these opportunities for our youth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's really cool. And it's, it's good to, uh, you know, to hear about these successes and, and the things, um, that it's setting up kids to become adult adults and to, and to provide the, the leadership. Cause a lot of times that is a little bit lacking. There's so much going on with different curriculum at schools and things like that, uh, that you got to get so much in, you got to learn this, you got to learn that, that sometimes, you know, some of these things uh, you don't get to spend enough time on. So 4-H is uh, a great opportunity to to cultivate leadership and, and all of that. So that's uh, so pretty exciting. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to there's some things going on. So the, the things we talked about coming up this uh, – not this weekend. Uh, so starting back with school, the, uh, the, the in-classroom kind of stuff will be stuff to look out for. And I uh, have to think about timing of when the podcast will come out. So this weekend might might have already passed by people. That's the time people are listening to this. Uh, but so you can stay tuned to learn about um, the successes of 4-H. I don't remember the direct website. I will say that you can get to the uh, Franklin County Cooperative Extension website by going to franklincountync.gov. And under departments, go to Cooperative Extension. There's a link that takes you to their page, and you can uh, stay tuned for exciting things happening over there with Cooperative Extension and 4-H and, and all of that. Um, so before we, we kind of wrap up, uh, I'll put point out um, in June we launched a video series called Around Franklin County, and it's a little bit longer of a video than what we've typically put out. Uh, and this first episode focuses on the Franklinton Community Garden, where uh, a group of uh, volunteers, not uh, a lot of uh, older folks, but they have some younger folks actually coming out there and participating in developing this community garden that they use to give back to the community. It's right behind the Franklinton Senior Center, uh, and it was a it was a fun thing to go out and learn about. You can watch that video on our YouTube page. Um, with our YouTube handle at Franklin C O N C, or also you can go through franklincountync.gov about us and there's an around Franklin County page where you can watch it there. We will have another one coming out very, very soon on parks and recreation projects. Uh, and then there'll be some more down the road for uh, more content. Well, that's all about the time we have left for today. The Franklin County NC Podcast is produced by Franklin County as a public service to better inform and provide timely and relevant information. Tune in for more informative shows about what is happening in Franklin County. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform. Like or rate the podcast and share it with your friends and family. To find out more about Franklin County NC, go to our website at franklincountync.gov and sign up for our email newsletter while you are there. For all of us here at Franklin County, I'm James Hicks, and we'll talk to you soon. 